cartoons all right my we favorite got, time of the week yeah we got a good one for you today uh i'm nick that's uh, joe over there and we got george in the super friends shirt and joining us today is charlie sanders hi charlie hello i have a mouthful of trader joe's honey o's Ooh, Ooh. that's pretty good hey so i excuse thought me. i i want to talk about your uh <clears throat> DVD background and and all that but i but first we do talk about cereals and i thought it might be fun to do it in the style of a role-playing game okay um so let's do it everybody on board yeah sure okay yeah i, I think so i'll let you know when i'm not you, you find yourself <laughs> in a you find yourself in a cereal tavern called the shatty bowl arrayed mm. on the tavern table before you are numerous bowls of exotic cereals the barkeep pulls them out for you and says that some provide flavors beyond your wildest dreams while others have foul aftertaste that will linger into set Sunday afternoon. Mm. I myself in partaking in pebbles of fruit, says the barkeep. What will you uh, have? Uh, I will, shall have um, uh, from the trader that came to town, Joe, <laughs> honey O's. <laughs> uh, you, um, you, you take a bite and feel nourished, but strangely empty. Hmm. I, um, I spoke with a a man along the way, his name was Kashi, and <laughs> he put a peanut butter spell on me, um, and I'm eating peanut butter Kashi. Ah, yes. Uh, the barkeep plops down a, a, an orange juice and milk and two pieces of buttered toast and says, aha, part of a nutritious breakfast. <laughs> George? I have gotten kisses from the distant land of Hershey, their uh, mm. grain-based cereal. I've had it before, and it is uh, terrible, but i got to empty this bag of holding I have <laughs> filled with it. You, you take a bite and taste a flavor that, while not unpleasant, is wholly artificial. <laughs> the barkeep uh, says you've chosen well, adventures, and presents you with a reward, a ruby spear. And that's a weapon which grants you a plus one in speed and a negative 300 in quality. And, uh, and that's our serial role-playing adventure. All right, let's yeah, wrap right. this one up. Hey, <laughs> no, let's, hey, Charlie, uh, Charlie, can I ask you a serial related question? Sure. Have you, have you, cause Trader Joe's like, that looks like a healthy cereal, right? Is it? Yeah, basically have it you is. Always uh, been I didn't a healthy have cereal guy, it. like since like high school. Actually, I don't even eat cereal. My wife eats these. Oh um, yeah. But I borrowed them for the show. What about when you were a kid? Did you? Yeah, I loved cereal when I was a kid. Yeah. What yeah, I liked all the sugary stuff like Count Chocula, Boo Berry, Frankenberry. Oh, you got the good shit. Yeah, yeah, we had all that stuff. Um, oh, wow. oh, you mean like my parents let me have it? Type yeah, thing? yeah. Oh, well, they, it was in a bad way because they were, we just let you do anything you want, parents. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> So they were like, they were like really poor. And then like, occasionally my dad would like get some money somehow. And we'd go to the grocery store and he'd be like, get anything you want. Oh, that's great. <laughs> and so we'd eat like for like three days, we'd be eating like, uh, you know, Count Chocula and like those Kool-Aids that used to come in a little plastic bottle and you twist the top off. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. That would be for like three days. And then it'd be like four days of no food at all. <laughs> <laughs> And those little Kool-Aid twisty tops are probably still uh, intact in a, a land oh, yeah. somewhere. Right Definitely now. like inside of a dead duck <laughs> floating down. <laughs> and, it, and it probably took two years off your life, too. <laughs> oh, my God. Totally. The spike of sugar and then the crash. <laughs> so, Charlie, I wanted to have you on to watch the Dungeons & Dragons cartoon. Here's the Dungeons & Dragons cartoon on VHS here. I remember that, yeah. And... Um, I, the reason I thought of you for that, we've wanted to have you on the show for a while, but the reason I thought of you for this is because I know that you wrote the, you were a writer on Key and Peel, and you wrote the Dungeons and Dragons sketch mm -hmm. on that, and then that led to other opportunities. So tell us a little bit about your history with D and D and everything. Um, yeah, I uh, I played D and D as a kid for a really long time. I always think that I played D and D 
I was 16 or 17 ever more secretly as I met girls and stuff. Um, and I started doing improv at 15. So I never really stopped like pretending and making shit up. <laughs> then years later, I got back into D&D right around the time I was writing for Key and Peel. I wrote that sketch. And then the people from Dungeons and Dragons, which is owned by Hasbro uh, outside of Seattle, got knew somebody that I knew and they were like, oh, who wrote the Dungeons and Dragons sketch? And my friend uh, Drew, uh, who you guys may have played D&D with a couple yeah. times or something with, um, he uh, connected me with them and they hired me to come up and be a consultant on the uh, latest Dungeons and Dragons manual. I guess it's not the latest, the second latest. Yeah, so, I mean, that's a cool opportunity. What was that like? You like went there and you just kind of spitballed ideas with them? Yeah, yeah, it was really fun. We just, um, uh, yeah, it's it's like a writer's room, but easier because like they're actually going to go do the writing there. I was just there to be like an idea machine. So um, yeah, we'd sit in the room. There was four of us, uh, the three dudes that are like permanent employees of D&D that write the stories and stuff like that. Um, and uh, yeah, they'd just be like, okay, we want to do something about some kind of mafia creature that dwells below. And like, these are my two perfect interests, mafia, the mafia and Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> crossing together. And I'd be like, oh, what if he, you know, his lair looked like this or looked like that? Or what if the mob boss, you think he's going to be an enemy, but then he hires them and they have to commit some Robin Hood style crimes, you know, that kind of oh, thing. And man. you just do that. Then you go out to lunch and they take you out to like a really nice lunch. <laughs> And, you just oh do my that God. For and then they put me in this like amazing hotel outside of Seattle. So then at night, I just like go out in Seattle. Oh, what, and, it's uh, like it a, dream you got your make a wish, you know, yeah. <laughs> it was totally a dream what, job. It was what amazing. is everybody else's history with D&D? I know I played when I was like, be, I had an older babysitter when I was maybe like 10 and he led like two or three adventures that I still can remember vividly to this day. And then I picked it back up fairly recently. And Charlie, you let a a campaign for me, Joe, and another friend one time. And yep. Joe, did you ever that, play as a kid? That or? was about, that's my, been my only experience is Charlie's, when Charlie DM'd that one game. Yeah. And then also this cartoon. Like I watch this cartoon every single day. And uh, what's it? Oh, Lords of Waterdeep. It's a board game based in the Dungeons and Dragons world. That's yeah, it. That's, the that's based on the manual I consulted for. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's it. I didn't play it. I didn't play any in high school. I, I remember know, when, when we I, played I was in New York. Oh right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when we played in New York, Joe, you were just you were just trying to like stab the other players in the back and steal That's what their I do with and... I played Grand Theft Auto. I just tried to like punch. Even the cops. even though you're like a paladin, you're supposed to be the most virtuous <laughs> character, and you're just, playing a you're playing it totally as a scoundrel. Yeah. I wanted action. I want action. <laughs> That's what you do on VCR party. You stab Nick, your your teammate, in the back all the time. <laughs> Yeah, let me derail this for my own interests. <laughs> George, I, you and I are playing in a campaign currently, but did you have yes. any uh, um, I, I, over Zoom? But what was your previous experience? Well, I used to, let's see, I got the manuals when I was like eight or nine, and I distinctly remember playing a solo module during the 1985 Super Bowl. <laughs> no, I, I remember it was the most 1985 moment because Dire Straits Walk of Life was playing on the radio. The <laughs> Super Bowl was on TV. And yet I was playing a, I believe, a, a six level dwarf in a in a uh, underground cave. So by yourself alone. Wow. So they, they have modules so that you can play by yourself. Oh, that's yes. even that's the saddest mm -hmm. of them all. It oh, sure is. <laughs> Let, let's show a, we'd like to do a commercial up top and George pulled this one. It's actually a, a commercial for the game of Dungeons and Dragons. So let's take oh, a look nice. at that. Your dungeon master has placed you in a dreadfully precarious position. You're playing the most phenomenal game ever created. Your skin grows cold from your first glimpse of the enormous beast. It's a product of your imagination. Survival depends on a quick, decisive move. Your choices are limited. Stand and fight or run. Use your lightning bolt. Victory is yours. Win the treasure. TSR Hobbies. Dungeons and Dragons games. Products of your imagination. That made it look fun. <laughs> Pretty cool. Well, I never saw that commercial before. What either. was that group of people? Was it a family? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how they were, how they knew each other, how they're related at all. Um, I'll say it was well cast. Yeah, <laughs> the cast yeah definitely. Dead on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Maybe the dad, every time it cut to him, he was going like that. <laughs> yeah and it had everything like a, a board game commercial did except for somebody saying i win because <laughs> yeah. that, really, that never really happens in D, &D. Yeah. i've advanced a level 
Yeah. Well, hey, I just wanted to do a brief history of the cartoon and then and then get into it because it's a 20 minute cartoon. But the uh, uh, basically Dungeons and Dragons was started by Gary Gygax, who was a, a literal cobbler in Wisconsin. He like he, he was a cobbler who played war games with his friends. And he and his buddy Dave Arneson created this role playing game. You know, I've never seen a photo of him before. And he looks exactly like it, how I exactly. Imagined. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, and through his company in Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, TSR, the game gets hugely popular. It's controversial, but that only adds to the sales. And then in 1983, um, Gygax goes through a, an ugly divorce and goes to Hollywood because the people, he doesn't like the people who are running his company. And he's like, I'm going to start the Hollywood division of TSR. And he goes there and he uh, has a meeting about the cartoon. He also meets with Orson Welles about a movie, a D&D &D movie, and signs Orson Welles to star in it. But meantime, he's in Hollywood, uh, by all reports, like on coke benders he rented a uh, uh a mansion in the hollywood hills has uh playboy models and starlets over his two sons are with him and he's just kind of on this like bachelor spree out there uh living a hollywood lifestyle this cobbler from wisconsin but uh the cartoon gets a uh, greenlit and it's a co-production between tsr his company and then marvel and in uh, 1983 and 85, they uh, produced 27 episodes on CBS, and it led its time slot. Like, unlike a lot of these cartoons we're watching, wow. this was actually popular. And it was uh, great. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a dream team right there, Marvel and TSR. Like, yeah. yeah, that would have like been a movie series by now. And yeah. Marvel was like nothing at that time. They were going through hard times as well. But you had uh, these characters, which were, some of them were new classes that Gary Gygax created that were then in... Um, where it would end up in a monster manual uh, afterwards, but like the character of the acrobat on the left here. Um, and they cast a bunch of child stars as the the actors. So the the ranger in front there is by Willie Ames, who was a buddy from Charles in Charge. And also it's, Bible Man. Yeah, Bible Man. Yeah. Uh, the cavalier is Ralph Mouth, Donnie Most. And Presto, the uh, wizard, is Adam Rich from Eight is Enough. So that, this is your wow, cast that's here. A, that's star-studded. Yeah, and then they're all led by a character called the Dungeon Master, who is not like an overseer in the game. He's just kind of a helper who pops up with a distinctive look here. Um, and Sid Miller is a guy who wrote and directed the Mickey Mouse Club, does the voice of this guy. And Charlie, I know you're doing a podcast called Bald Talk. I don't know yeah. if you can get the dungeon master on oh but... that, he would be an amazing guest if we could animate him and have that dude do his voice <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> we'd love to talk to him the main villain in the series was this guy uh venger who's played by peter cullen who's optimus prime in uh, oh, transformers wow. this was also animated by the same people who did uh transformers which is toei which is a japanese company around from the 40s and that's why the animation looks a little better than the typical cartoons we've been watching anyway like by yeah Ruby Spears well, and Deep. here's here's my only problem with watching this so far we've watched like terrible cartoons right and like i watched one today this is actually a good cartoon like it's well directed there's a great score like yeah. they have dramatic pauses the voice the voice talent is is good like yeah yeah it, it's, I, it's i think the only thing it has in common with all the shitty ones that we watched before was that it has frank welker in it who does the voice the, of <laughs> a uni. voice of uni yeah uni, the unicorn. Mm. did yeah. everybody watch this so you guys watch did, did you watch it charlie no i, I haven't watched it yet Okay. I mean, maybe when I was a kid, I saw it. Okay, but you don't remember like tuning in in the mornings to watch this. I do. I do. Oh, you do. I, okay. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, right. I thought you meant this exact episode, like before this. Um, oh no, interview. no, no. Just uh, yeah, I watched. watched I watched the whole thing. I, I loved it. Yeah, I for me it was way too dark, and I think like me and my sister would gravitate towards the comedy cartoons, and this one, I was really disturbed by the fact that the kids go on a roller coaster, get transported to. The, the realm of Dungeons and Dragons and then can mm. never find their way home and never do. They never do in the series. They never see their parents again. <laughs> yeah, it was really disturbing. And there's there's like, I think in this episode, they talk about wanting to see their mom and dad. And I picked a pretty dark episode called The City at the Edge of Midnight, which sounds like a D&D &D module, basically. Oh, and a great totally. title. That is just a straight up great title. And in hey. this one, we, we don't see the main um, villain, Venger, but we do see a, a terrifying villain called the night walker who kidnaps children from the real world in the middle of the night and turns them into slaves 
<laughs> real i mean saturday morning not cool 8 30 you're eating your fruity pebbles and you're like oh my god Wait. i remember like i remember like it was my first time watching stuff on on v, on a vcr because our neighbor had a vcr and he would record that in the morning we would watch something we'd watch like muppet babies at the same time and then we'd watch this later so this is my first experience with a vcr oh. so this is very uh yeah oh, that's cool but but i remember like also like like being like genuinely scared from this cartoon yeah uh, i also remember laughing so hard at one particular scene where the wizard kid puts a stop sign in front of a dragon and we were wound it at least 25 <laughs> times and That's, we just had I, tears streaming I, down yeah and i watched some episodes today to try to find that scene i couldn't maybe somebody uh, I, I went looking for it too i have yeah. no idea i mean i could have misremembered what he was okay. actually doing too so well I, let's just watch it and if you come up with other memories or things you want to bring up we'll, we'll stop it but this is city at the edge of midnight we'll watch it in two parts and here's the first part hey look a dungeons and dragons ride Break. I don't like this. Whoa! What's happening? Whoa! Where are we? Look out! There's Tiamat, the dragon. Tiamat? Ranger? I like Ron. Barbarian? Magician? What's that? It's kind of like that, um, the dude uh, Godzilla fought. The many headed dragon. Oh, I'm yeah. On his name. Who's that? Rodan or. One I think those. it was like Mega Lipsalon or something like that. Okay. Also, also, I think Tiamat is a is a girl dragon. That's a female I think dragon. That's true. You hear oh, the voice yeah. in a terrifying episode called The Dragon's Graveyard. You hear the voice, and it's kind of a I think it's a male voice, but it probably is a female dragon. So all right, let's keep huh? watching. Cavalier and acrobat. He gives them magical weapons. was Venger, the force of evil. I am Dungeon Master, your guide in the realm of Dungeons and Dragons. Good intro. Yeah. The intro. animation, Good. the animation kind of looks like anime a little bit too, because of yeah, it made in Japan. I see Michael Reeves wrote most of these episodes. Mm. Just high on coke with Gary Gygax. <laughs> <in another way. laughs> Demons are kidnapping the children. Dad, 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 help! Let me go! Let me go! Dad, yeah, this is horrifying. I mean, <laughs> Jimmy, open the door! <laughs> the desperate dad. Oh, no! So it opens. Dad, Jimmy, getting sucked under the bed. That's their biggest fear. You just got done watching Jimmy? Gummy Bears. And then... Jimmy, where are you? Jimmy! <laughs> Cold open. Jimmy's dead. Hey, so I made a wrong turn. Trust me, I figured it out. We just head that way and... Water. He's kind of a selfish jerk character. Water. Yeah, isn't he the one that didn't like the ride? In the intro? Yeah. Yep. I know exactly where we are. Yeah, 100 miles from nowhere and 50 miles from any place. I'm telling you, I know what I'm doing. We just head that way... Oh, just the guy I want to see. Dungeon Master. Boy, we're glad to see you. Please. Dungeon Master, Can we're you lost where again. We are? Patience, young ones. You will find both safety and danger ahead. I mean, we basically have Yoda, to find right? Both? I am yeah, sorry, basically. but yes, also you both. must find <laughs> the city at the edge of midnight. Midnight? Ah, oh, terrific. Now we're the night shift. Where is this city, Dungeon Master? <laughs> you this will guy. find your yeah. way. The or rather, gotta kick this guy your way out. will find yeah, I know. you. Just, and just time it. is on your side. But heed this warning. There are others who are more lost than you shall ever be. Children from this world and yours. It is up to you to save them. Children? But Dungeon Master! Oh, he's gone again! How are we supposed to find other children if we don't even know where we are? <laughs> Ask Eric. He got us into this. Uh, oh, no. no, no, no not me. No way. I, I quit. Oh, come on, Eric. I was only... What are you going to do? You can find yeah. yourselves another fall guy! <laughs> 
What is this? Oh. It's an oasis. Right Where'd it crotch. come from? <laughs> Nowhere, dummy. Can't you tell a mirage kind when of you a see phallic one? Fountain. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Will somebody tell these dummies it's just a mirage? Hey, Nick, you, can you pause for a second? Yeah. So which one of the kids is voiced by the guy that did Optimus Prime? Oh, uh, Venger, the villain at oh, the beginning. Oh, Venger is. Yeah. So didn't, didn't Orson Welles voice Optimus Prime in the Transformers movie? He did Unicron, the giant planet oh, okay. eater. But you're right. That was his last uh, credit on IMDb <laughs> was as Unicron in the Transformers movie. Wow, that's crazy. I, I love that George just pounced on that. <laughs> I was so ready. Every conversation I have, I'm Wrong, trying, to, Charlie. Put that trying to get it in. Well, <laughs> what is this creature close to anything you've seen in like uh, the Monster Manual, Charlie? Is this? Yeah, I could see it. I don't know what exactly. Yeah. But... The, I think it's called uh, a hooked something. horror, I think. A hooked horror? Okay. Hooked horror, yes, yes. That seems about right. Yep. Hook horror. Again, pretty terrifying. I mean, <laughs> yeah, like, look at this. Yeah. 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 Who are those guys? Oh, what are those guys? Well, I'll tell you what they are. They're surrounding us. Get back. So he got initiative. Hey, what they are, they're surrounding us. Aha! What? what in the world? You dare to enter this beautiful oasis. I think this is Optimus. I think Peter Cullen's doing the voice of him too. Oh, nice. Yeah, you can kind of tell it's Optimus Prime. Um, also, I'm surprised that these kids are still surprised by everything that happens. <laughs> <laughs> also, After, you, you know, know, years in this world. <laughs> also, you know, those rocks are going to be crumbled pretty soon. They're brighter yeah. than everything yeah, else. Yeah, <laughs> Telltale sign. Side. Yep. <laughs> yeah, they don't stand a chance. There they go. <laughs> Creatures? Well? Well, well, well what? <laughs> well, my friends, shall we not, how do you say, uh, knock the monster's socks off? All right! Huh? Yeah! He's either French or Middle Eastern. Yeah. Somebody tell me what's going on! Splendid, my son. That's <laughs> Wait a minute. Who is that guy? <laughs> I guess she's kind of the rogue. Uh... Wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> you think that's something? <laughs> and then like a lot of D&D art, the women all have uh, bikinis on, whereas the men have armor and uh, cloaks. <laughs> yeah, a fur bikini. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Animators have good defensive have against too. a sword. <laughs> yeah. Watch this, Allie. Oops. Not you guys. Allie Oops was her uh, catchphrase. Oh. <laughs> oh, my children. You are, how do you say, hot stuff? Hold it right there. <laughs> well, we say Nobody hot stuff. Nobody moves until somebody <laughs> tells me who, who that is. Uh, that guy, that guy. Uh, may I? <laughs> this guy's the worst. Be our guest. He's just kind of toying with them. Everyone does is blow up rocks and rigs. Yep. I don't think you actually <laughs> see death do you? Right. No, but in one episode they're contemplating actually killing Venger, their enemy, and it's like gets like pretty real. And yeah. that one got a warning beforehand because of the violence and the adult nature of it. Now, have we met this character in the turban before? No, he's a new NPC that we're meeting. He's pretty right. handy. Yeah, yeah you I know. <laughs> no, no, my children. We did it. What do you mean, we? We means us. Me and them. I know who they are. They know who I am. But who are you? <laughs> my daughter always scolded me for my ill manners. Forgive me. I, 
am Ramud, what? caravan merchant from Kaddish. So you are the brave one, the first to enter the forbidden oasis of no return? Yeah, you might say I was the first. D -d Did you say no return? Indeed. This accursed oasis appears once a year, a trap for like unwary travelers. <laughs> Those creatures were once like human they wanted like this you to be Ricardo me, but yeah. they made the mistake of spending the night The guy's awfully white for a Middle Eastern guy. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, gee, well, what an interesting story. That's kind of a cool idea, though. They were people who who uh, didn't leave before the night was over, and then they turned into that those beasts. Oh, so yeah, they, I like they that. They used to be like them. Kind of a cool well, that's, idea. That's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. I like these double penis noses. But yeah. do not worry. <laughs> it is an hour before the setting of the suns. Garushk. And by then, we will be a league or more away from here. That is, if you will honor me by joining my caravan. Wow, thanks. Hey, sure. How do you say? Hang around here. <laughs> <laughs> How do you say then totally I, radical, dude? As you say, <laughs> alley -oops. Come on, Presto. How do we know we can trust this rum dude or a bum mood or... Wait for me, Ramud, old buddy! Come on, giddy up! Move it! Step on it, let us go, Ramuz! Say, Ramud, how do you start these things again? The word is Kutrash! Hey, Kutrash, Kutrash! No, no, Master Eric, roll your tongue! Kutrash! You wouldn't still be able to hear him. Kutrash! <laughs> hey, stop! Whoa! Cease! Hey, Ramud! <laughs> Has the mighty barbarian lost his appetite? That was great, but one more bite and I'll bust. Eric, can you eat mine too? You kidding? Pass it down. Remove this is great better than anything back home. <laughs> Talk about the way to a man's heart. Dear Sheila, your voice reminds me of my daughter. Where are my children? Time dear, for bed. Dear Sheila. Nah, I, I can eat all night. Say, where is your daughter anyway? What is it? Like uh, yogurt did, with cherries did I, in it Did something? I say something? She is... I guess so, she yeah. She is not here Some anymore. Some bologna slabs out there. She <laughs> disappeared from my palace one night long time ago H have you looked for her I, I mean we could help you look and you bet we will it's the least there's a lot do. of touching no, between my mood and the kids <laughs> <laughs> thank yeah, you it's all a little odd. i know where she is there is just no way to reach her yet it's a long long story but come this should be a happy time are we not a family now and the house of ramud is doubly blessed for i have no family. Joe, <laughs> look at yeah he is, but look at your what you're wearing and look at what Ramud's wearing. I oh, it's just the same thing. Yeah. I'm, I'm, is that on I'm purpose? rocking a little Ramud action here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you are. Are this party's Ramud? He's we wearing a bathrobe, which is also kind of things as well. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Oops. And he's calling you and your the family. unicorn too. <laughs> Lights That's out, all Welker guys. had to show up to do that day. Yep. Tomorrow we start looking for that city. What? Oh, yeah. Gee. Oh, gee. I forgot. Good idea, Bobby. They Let's actually keep had on or forgetting. Orchestration uh, on Hank, can yeah, we crazy. stay? This Ramud's like work. awfully yeah. nice. Yeah. He's the next best thing to having a real dad. Are you kidding? He's better than my dad ever was. Oh, All right. Very quickly. They want to adopt oh. him. Like, yeah. <laughs> what is this? You are all still awake? Come, my children, to sleep. And for you, Sheila, this, to hold you safe in your dreams. I will touch you again. <laughs> it belonged to my daughter, my dear Aisha. Oh, I couldn't. Please accept it. If I never find her, I would like to Look know it is loved by one as lovely as she. Good night, my children. A cold cut, a cold cut combo from Subway? <laughs> All right, that's part one of uh, <laughs> Ramud getting a little, moving a little fast, I think. Yeah, like, immediately telling them his kids. Yeah. He picked her, too. Like, shouldn't he say, I want this to be for all of you, 
He picks one out. This is for you. It's called yeah, grooming. It's his favorite. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, he did say she her, she reminds him of his daughter Aisha. Uh-huh. I think it was Moesha. Sure. Uh, um, yeah. That's what that show was a spin off. Moesha, the show was a spin off from this. It right? was, yeah. So, uh, George, you mentioned that um, there are some toys from this Dungeons and Dragons cartoon, which I didn't realize. Well, I what I have is uh, I have a game here. And that is a game called Merchandising and Dragons. Oh, um, it's sounds fun. It's a true and false game, but uh, Joe has uh, a new version of this called Does or Doesn't. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, you're and, gonna send me royalties though. So I'm gonna describe a piece of merchandise, and, and you're gonna tell me whether it really exists or not. Okay. Okay. Does or doesn't exist. Right, right, right. There yeah. you go. So one, there was a 1984 tie-in board game that shows Venger playing with the kids on the cover. Hmm. I'm going to say no. Did not. I'm, does not exist. I'm going to say does exist. I'm going to say does. Sounds too specific. All right. Really? It does. Okay. It, it, yeah. And uh, they're all having fun. <laughs> and um, it has a rating of 4.4 on Board Game Geek. <laughs> look at look at Vengers just out having a grand old time with the game. Yeah, he's enjoying hanging with yeah, them. Out of, out of 10, yeah. Who's oh, on man, the right guy on the left? That's yeah. uh, that's Strongheart the Paladin, a eh? <laughs> who appears in episode, I believe, eight. Oh, okay. George, you've been waiting your whole life for this episode, right? I mean, <laughs> yes. Um, all right. All right, I want so, that game. Yeah. So there, there are the cards in it. it apparently, it's terrible, but um, the parts of it look great. Yeah. Two in 1984, there was a Dungeons and Dragons themed big wheel. Ooh, I want it to be true. I'm going to say d- does exist. Does I'd say it doesn't. It's it's oh. true with an asterisk. It was a um, power uh-huh. cycle, so not so by Coleco, so not the big wheel uh, by Lewis Marx. But look, these are all big wheels, right? Whoa, yeah, that yeah. counts. Holy well, cow! I don't know. That would have been amazing. I wish I had that. And look, there's yeah. there's the gang in the back, but there is Strongheart the Paladin in the front. Why is he? Always- <laughs> and Venture uh, wasn't as into this one. He enjoyed the board game, but he didn't, he didn't yeah. get behind the big wheel. Yeah. Exciting 3D dragon head. That is an exciting <laughs> head. Okay, so. Three in 2020, there were collectible statues of Venger made that cost $250 each. Ooh. Does I'm gonna say does as well. I'm gonna go doesn't again. Okay, okay. Wow. Well, does uh, so they made these are each of these individual figures was a hundred dollars each, but the Venger figure, which was gigantic, oh, yeah. was I 250. I get it. Yeah, it's pretty uh-huh. cool. His one horn is pretty awesome. Yeah, like that idea of just a single horn coming one out. side horn. Yeah, that it's stallion. It kind, of took, it kind of puts it's a little off putting. Just one mm-hmm. horn coming out. All right. Yeah, so it's kind of creepy. Two yeah. more. We've got uh, there is currently a hoodie for adults designed to look like the chest of Bobby the eight year old barbarian that you can purchase. Does. Does. I think you're doing all does's. Does. Yep. Uh, nice. There it is. Um, <laughs> available in three times extra large. Uh, but they also have them for Hank the Ranger. You have to. And for yeah. uh, Eric the Cavalier. And I think I, other than the $142 price tag, I'd be all over that one. Just, right. just a, that's how much it is for that hoodie? Yeah. Insane. Just a, a quick aside that Charlie and Joe and I have gone to Gen Con a few times that where Gary, it was founded by Gary Gygax uh, in Lake Geneva, and now it's in Indianapolis. But they have a t shirt booth, and every t shirt booth has to go up to 3XL. It's just, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. they got to know. You their know. Audience. <laughs> You know there's a guy walking up to one of those stands going, excuse me, do you have a four at the... <laughs> yep. they, they don't move any of the smalls. No, no. the smalls no. stay right on the shelf. Yep. They don't All even right. make them. Last one. Spirit Halloween sells a costume for Presto. Oh, I'm going to go dozen. dozen. No one does. No, I'll I'm go does. I'll go does. You're going to do all dozens. All right. Oh, no, um, there is not. But they do have the only one they have is the Dungeon <laughs> Master costume, fifty dollars. Um, and it, it looks kind this of. This is awesome. how we get them on Bald Talk. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> What'd you say about it, George? Yeah, which it's, it's the merchandising is strong, and hopefully it'll be getting better in the future. Who knew? Nick, 
Nick, do you think if you let your hair grow, it would come out like the Dungeon Master? Because you, you're a little wispy on top. Do you think that if you let the hair go, that it, you would kind of look like that a little bit? My ex-girlfriend's dad did have Dungeon Master hair, and he grew out one side really <laughs> long and then would comb it over. And I remember not knowing that until we went to a pool one time on at the Grand Canyon, went to a pool in a hotel, and I saw just this side draping down his back, and this side was just the normal uh, thing. But I'm not quite there yet. No, okay. not quite there. Well, I'm glad I asked. Yeah. yeah. Let's take a quick commercial break. Challenge your imagination to come alive and to battle with the creatures of Dungeons and Dragons. Grapple against the forces of evil as a Marvel Comics superhero. Hunt adventure and glory as Indiana Jones. <laughs> The all-new role-playing games of TSR and Dungeons and Dragons unleash the power of your imagination. Indiana Jones would be cool. Open your mind to new Dungeons and Dragons computer game from Mattel Electronics. I had this. It will lead your imagination down a dungeon labyrinth wherein lies the dragon's treasure. Steal his treasure, but make no false moves. For in Dungeons and Dragons, a dead end is a dead end. Dungeons and Dragons from Mattel Electronics. The eerie world of deep, dark dungeons. Mystery and magic seem real. There's good against evil with advanced Dungeons and Dragons action figures. War Duke, Kellogg, Strongheart, and Bronze Dragon, each sold separately. Beware, Strongheart. You will cast an evil spell and steal the treasure. Whoa, evil is no match for good. The treasure is safe. Advanced Dungeons and Dragons action figures, Kellogg, War Duke, Bronze Dragon, Strongheart, each sold separately from LJN. Nice. Now what do I do? Okay, this is Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Video game cartridge. You have to buy it separately to play on the Intellivision video game system. Mom and Dad have to hook it up to the TV. What next? We're trying to find a crown, but it's real easy to get lost. So don't be surprised if the dragon finds you first. Holy cats, you just killed the dragon. I'm sorry, I didn't mean it. Advanced Dungeons & Dragons <laughs> video game cartridge and Intellivision Master Component from Mattel Electronics, each sold separately. Last night, I journeyed backwards in there town to the medieval world of Dark Tower. In this amazing game, I had oh, I to find this three game keys so badly. for a siege to the tower and defeat the enemy within. Each move was a challenge. The computer kept track, giving me secret information, pictures, sounds, surprises. Then, ahead of my opponent, I made my move. The battle was joined, and I was victorious. Dark Tower. Uh huh. The director of horse, uh, the director of Citizen Kane. <laughs> yep. <laughs> director and star. <laughs> Wait, so that Mattel game where you just place it—is that just a guessing game? Do you just like hope that you don't. Dark Tower. It? No, the, no, the, the first oh, one. The, the tell one? Yeah. No, it's it's kind of like Minesweeper. Like you move and something bad happens, so you can tell there's like a wall there. So then you have to like keep a mental picture in your head, like, oh, okay, so the maze goes this way. So you're kind of like exploring, seeing what barriers are around you. And okay. have you played it? it? Yeah, yeah. We found it at a thrift store in uh, Tennessee and it actually still worked. So oh. I have it. Yeah. Um, let's get back into the episode. It's compelling. Um I'm curious to as to whether um, the guy is going to be evil or a good guy. What do you, what would you guess? What would you say? Their uh, father, fig, their father figure friend. What's his name? <laughs> oh, uh, I yeah. think he's a good guy. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if he's a good person, but I think he's <laughs> he's not looking to kill him. All right, let's find out. It gets even uh, cooler. Oh, 
lost their friend. Bobby! Bobby! <laughs> he is gone, little one. Ramud! Where'd they go? To the city at the edge of midnight. This... This is what happened to my daughter. My Aisha. Stolen by the beast who has no name. He is known only as... The Nightwalker. He kind of does have a name. Remember the dummy who said <laughs> yeah. forget going to that city? Well, forget forgetting it. Let's get that thing open. <laughs> cool, cool scene with the, the clock going off. Yeah, totally. We're not afraid to have silence. Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like crossing the streams. Mm -hmm. My children, are you ready? There's no time like the present. And we're Let's not go! your children. <laughs> Somehow, I don't think we're in Kansas City, guys. That night walker That's my can't be that smart. Life. His oh. clock's a couple oh. of minutes slow. Oh, nice. It was just midnight when we left, and you guys see that? There's another one. Yeah, like this music is interesting. Don't look now, but I get the yeah, feeling soundtrack. we're being watched. That's okay, as long as all they want to do is watch. Eight thirty in the morning. <laughs> uh oh, end of the road. You mean for them? Wait, they might take us to Aisha and Bobby. Think it's worth a try? Perhaps. Sheila, you that. are as brave as my own Aisha. I don't know. But if any harm <laughs> comes to you, the Night Walker will pay. I think his checks in the mail already. That's kind of clever. Yeah. It never strikes me. Now. Yep. It's at the edge of midnight. Hey, quit your shoving! You do find out a little bit how time works in the realm here as opposed to in the real world. It's kind of kind of adds it. to the mythology. Child slaves. <laughs> CBS was like, sounds good, guys. Child slaves? What are they all doing? They hold back the wheels of time. <gasps> what? They keep time frozen forever. For the clock must never strike midnight. And you are going to join them. Where are the children called Aisha and Bobby? Enough, enough <laughs> of this exposition. <laughs> Where are the children called you Aisha are and Bobby? <laughs> in a tower above. And you oh. will join them. Now. Why did he give away where they were? <laughs> Wait. Like you want to save them? Yeah. Were you going to say it's like a Bond thing? Yeah, like a Bond villain who's always yeah. describing exactly. <laughs> His plan, At the yeah. stroke of midnight, my plan will go. To, you know. It's a lot of thinking out loud in these yeah. cartoons. Too many. Run for it. That's what I said. Hijacking her pet Bobby and Aisha. He said they were in the tower, and that's where we're headed. Yeah, at a hundred miles an hour. We'll smash through the roof. The dungeon master said time's on our side. And he's been right about everything so far. Time, that's it. This clock. Midnight. Is this episode we ended with Time is on my side by the Rolling Stones? Yeah, they licensed it. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised uh... at all. <laughs> Running again. Get ready to jump. What? Bring anything to eat? 
What? After all we've been through, all you can say is cool it. Bobby, where's Aisha? Your daughter's here? Gee, I haven't met anybody by that name. The Nightwalker lied. Aisha! <laughs> Let's get this thing running. You got it! Not telling their parents. <laughs> their One chance are alive. to get a message back home, and it had to be Jimmy Whittaker. I always what told you guys Whittaker was a wimp, <laughs> but did anybody listen? No. If we ever get home, I'm going straight over to Whittaker's house and. This is his second tumble. Welcome back, Cavalier, and welcome to you, Your Majesty. Your Majesty. My daughter. Great dungeon master, did my Aisha return with the others? Father! Aisha, at last. Oh, I can stop my touching children. other children. <laughs> Meet your new sister. This is a time for celebration. Dungeon master, why did you call Ramud your majesty? You say, party He's on, just a dude. caravan <laughs> merchant, isn't he? A disguise he has used while searching for his daughter. Ramud is a king, a king of many kings, ruler of a vast land to the east. But he always I calls think, um, us his children. The dungeon master should have been voiced by Wallace Shawn. Oh. He looks like Wallace Shawn. You're yeah, right. Yeah, kind of Missed opportunity. <laughs> You're right. It should have been Wallace. That, Shawn. dear pupils, will be it's the next choice you must face. <laughs> this is for you, Sheila, for always. You have food and water for many weeks, man. What? She already got that, though. She already got yeah, that. You can't. It. <laughs> it was hers. Why are they giving it? All right. Thanks. Children, how can I ever thank you? You've already thanked us, Your Majesty. Uh, uh. <laughs> okay, Ramud. I'm, I'm sorry we can't stay. It's just that we've got to keep searching for the way back home. I understand. Well then, shall we, as you say, Alleyoops? <laughs> they use a lot of recurring Goodbye, phrases. Bye, Goodbye, Aisha. Goodbye, Farewell, double penis nose beast. <laughs> trash. No, Master Eric. Rule your tongue. Oh, all right. Trash. Goodbye, guys, from the Joe <laughs> Sackie's commercial. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> He truly was the most interesting man in the world. Zero percent shatty. That was a great episode. Wasn't that cool? I mean, yeah, I, it was actually good. I couldn't find one that was sh shatty enough, but I wanted yeah. to see this cartoon. Yeah, you, you, there's absolutely no shat in this. It could have been like a Disney cartoon or something. So I think yeah. the only thing that makes it shabby is uh, Frank Welker. 
Yeah, because he's in every of crappy cartoon doing yeah, all the animal voices. What percentage of cartoons would you say Frank Welker is in from the 80s? Like of Saturday morning cartoons? 80% doing <laughs> mostly animal voices. That's 100%. what I was going to say. Yeah. Which yeah, one was he? Could... Uni, the unicorn. Oh, Uni. Nick, do his voice. Do I, can't do, I can't do a Uni voice. Can you? Uh, oh. Do oh. Uni, can you? I can't do it either. George had a good one. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, that's yeah. really good. Yeah. That's what I do in bed. I... <laughs> that's how you clear your throat. Yeah. <laughs> so a quick a quick uh, thing is the the series they had a series finale planned, but um, the show was canceled after three seasons, and they never got to like the kids never got to go home. home. But there was a full script written called Requiem, and on one of the DVD versions of it, they basically did a a table read of it with a comic book you know, stills of a comic book that, with like a radio play to, to act it out. And uh, it was, you know, cool to see it all wrap up and the kids get home, but it didn't um, do it with any animation or with any production value. And then last year, you guys may have seen this and George reminded me of this, that um, there was a Brazilian commercial and apparently the cartoon is still huge in Brazil. Right, George? Is really? Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Cult following was even bigger uh, overseas than it was in the U.S. And they were doing a, a commercial for the French car Renault. And uh, this, is, uh, this is that commercial. Whoa. Tiamat. Portuguese, but this is a dubbed version in English. It's the Banker! Run! Time to go back home, my oh kids. <laughs> That's also Wallace. Sean. Also should have been Wallace Sean. Fools! <laughs> you will never escape! Go, 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 go! Crystal, do something! That's how it ends. Oh, the cop was Venger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's I mean, perfect. It needs to be a movie or a live action series on Netflix. Mm -hmm. I was gonna I was gonna ask about that. Has D D ever had a movie? Has there yeah, ever been a movie? Yeah, series of terrible ones, yeah. Um and well, wasn't our friend working on one for a while, Charlie? Wasn't uh, Drew working Drew was on trying one? to make it, yeah, with, with Joe Bacon. Oh, uh, it didn't work out. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so I don't think there's ever been a good one, really, uh, to this day. <laughs> yeah. Um, Spe speaking, speaking of uh, Joe, what's, how do you pronounce his last name? Manganello? Manganello. Manganiello. So you play, you play D&D with him. I do, and I'm actually, I didn't have PJs to wear for this, so I'm wearing sweatpants and my Joe Manganiello gifted D&D uh, &D jersey. Oh, no. <laughs> D&D jerseys? Oh my yeah, god! We all play together. Yeah. So, like, it, would you say that you play in the basement? Yeah, like, and it, him and Sofia Vergara's wine cellar, which looks like a <laughs> looks like a dungeon. Oh and, my god! And is he a is he a DMing or who who? Like, I DM. You DM? Yep. Oh, wow. yep. How, how's then, he as a player? Uh, he's great. He loves to fight and kill things, and uh, you know he's a he's a battler. Does Sofia Vergara ever? What is her reaction to? Her, they're married, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, she came down once and was like, "You sure you guys don't want any wine?" And we were like, "No." So, so no alcohol. <laughs> no, no alcohol. We're just gonna drink pop. <laughs> Why are you doing That's, this? Yeah, it was a real. Why? What is going on down here? That is so That's great. It. She's only made one appearance. Oh my god! And I assume probably 
post pandemic, you'll pick that back up at some point. Yeah, we've been we've done a few Zoom uh, sessions over the oh, pandemic. Nice. Yeah, not I as frequently bet, as we did in person. I bet they had really good wine too. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a big wine cellar, uh, but we do get. It's like you know, he has like um, what are they called? Help, and so the, we're we're served like fa- we have like fancy setups of food and stuff. It's wow, really nice. that's wow. Amazing. another Make a Wish. <laughs> come true <laughs> it, a long way from the basement uh, uh, unlike yes. a lot of uh episodes that we've uh seen of other shows this one didn't really have a lesson but george mm-hmm. is there a lesson in today's episode of Saturday morning cartoons oh i think there's a lesson here for us in our world and in many other dimensions child labor is all too common Rather than attending school, many young people find themselves making cheap clothing in crowded factories or pulling ropes to prevent a mystical clock from advancing. To prevent any possibility of further exploitation, young people must organize, work together, and ritually murder everyone over the age of 18 in a cornfield. No, improving one's conditions doesn't take any magical weapons. It merely requires regular sacrifices to he who walks behind the rose. And that's why I always say, the more you battle is twice the knowing wow a no. powerful lesson that's very usual. powerful <laughs> yes i'm taking that one home with me oh yeah charlie yeah. Uh, i your po- your podcast this is a real podcast called bald talk can you tell yes. us a little bit about that before we uh, sign off yeah bald talk is a podcast where uh, myself and brian and the actor brian husky two bald guys interview bald celebrities comedians actors writers musicians really anyone who's bald about being bald how bald do you have to be like if i because look, at, I, I'm receding. Is that, am I not bald enough to be on your... You could be on. Yeah, that's pretty good recession. Yeah. yeah. We, we've, we had one bald, we've had one balding person so far. But then we've also had, we had like Hollywood's top wig maker on. Um, but I, I wonder if like people who are actually bald would get mad that I'd be on there. They'd be like, he's not bald. You know what I mean? Um, some of them might. Some of them might. We've, we've had, uh, we'll, we haven't found out yet. We haven't released the episode. Uh, Matt Wheeler, the actor Matt Wheeler, who's balding, he's a little, a little more receded than you are, Joe. Okay. Um, but he still has hair. We had him on to talk about how how it is balding. Um, I, it's a really funny podcast, but it also talks about like insecurities <laughs> and like it, it gets kind of deep sometimes. So I, it, I really it does. enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad you like it. We'll, we'll have you on, and you can dress as the bald wizard guy. Oh, oh I would love to. <laughs> Nick, let's see where your baldness is at. It's. It's you know I think I would qualify. It's you know oh, it's, yeah you're you're balding. You yeah, balding. balding. It's a it's a gradual balding thing that's been happening since college. So yeah, I'm not George, quite. You look like you're kind of balding. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. all three of you guys. Maybe we'll have all three of you guys on in one episode. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there you go. To, yeah. to talk about sh- Saturday morning cartoons and balding. Well, yes. I want I want to uh, wrap up this adventure by saying that at at the Shaddy Bowl, you all get rooms at the end. And as your cereal sugar high wears off, you fall asleep and dream of cartoons. Everyone levels up, and when we awaken next week, we'll be faced with our fiercest enemy to date, a creature with fiery orange fur and a snout like a loxodon. It's Cubert. We're watching the uh, Cubert cartoon next week. Nice. So, oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> Going to yeah. be a good one. <laughs> That's, that sounds like a good one. Thank All you, right. Charlie, for joining All us. Right. Well, Thanks for having say, me. Appreciate uh, it. How you say so long, everybody. <laughs> Kutrash. So <laughs> to trash. Alley oops, everybody. Gotta roll it. Kutrash. <laughs> Alley oops, and then have a great Saturday. Saturday. Bye. Saturday. Bye. Bye. Where are the children called Aisha and Bobby?